Jack Martin brought to you by Dr. Pepper, an official soft drink of the Dallas Cowboys. The one fans deserve. Zach, how are you doing? And most importantly, how are you feeling, sir? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm feeling better. Appreciate it. So uh, what have you been doing to try and get that quad back? I was seeing some video. Like, are you trying some new, new stuff medically to try and get that thing healed and get back faster? Uh, yeah, I mean, just trying to do as much as you can, trying to get it just to, to um, you know, get some of that, the uh, you know, soreness, tightness out, keep it, keep it firing, and um, you know, just getting ready to play Sunday. If you want to borrow my leg, I, I, I'd be happy to give it up for you. Zach. Mine's a little yeah, younger. Zach. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's a sixty year old leg. I, I think ah, you could I ah. think you could overcome that sixty year old leg the way you play. So if, if you need it, just let me know. Well, I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'll you, keep that in mind. Yeah, I'm sure you will. <laughs> I, I want to be I want to be blocking Wilkins with a sixty year old leg. Yeah, right. oh, no thanks. No thanks. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> How tough was that one though to watch from the sideline? I'm sure you were itching to try and get back in there. Yeah, it was tough. It was just, um, God, it was, I don't know. It was just one of those games, right? Yeah. Like, you couldn't get it going. And, um, you know, on top of that, it was, uh, you know, obviously raining on us. And sure. uh, it was just a tough one. You know, obviously a lot to learn from and um, some things to clean up moving forward. But, um, yeah, definitely we want to have that one back. Zach, I'm going to ask you a terrible question. I'm Go sorry. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, We're used to it. Yeah. Yeah. You're used to my terrible <laughs> questions. Uh, but I, I kind of look at communication. And, and people ask me about road woes. And, you know, when we see you guys play at AT&T, we all hear the, you know, here we go. Right. And everybody's, you know, and I saw the other day, man, like, you know, Tyron and Tyler, they, they usually don't man twist stunts and end up in a sack. And I didn't know if it was communication there. Is communication on the road, and I'm not saying it's the problem with the team, but is it something that's really different on the road than it is having to play at home? I mean, you know, obviously you've got to be, um, you know, you got to be on top of it, right? Because you got the crowd noise, you sure. got you got everything else going on. But I will say, you know, I think our our mechanics and our silent count and all that stuff has been been about as good as it's been since I've been here. Just okay. the uh, the flowing through. But yeah, to answer your question, yeah, man, everything's just got to be a little sharper on the road, and um, you know, especially playing at a place like uh, like like Buffalo there and. You know, uh, we're used to sometimes, you know, being at road stadiums and, you know, having some fans and all that stuff. But uh, it was kind of one of those old school throwback road games where, um, you know, those Buffalo fran fans are crazy, get going. And um, it's just got to be a heightened sense of awareness there for, for communication and, and little details. Is there anything else that you guys have talked about? I think Nate Newton was talking yesterday during Cowboys Cross Talk about you need a different attitude. You need a different mentality when you go on the road. You're going to yeah. the warehouse. Yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of like us versus the world mentality, right? And, like, I really do enjoy playing on the road because, um, you know, you, you, you take that team flight. You're in the hotel together. It's, you know, you're kind of – you're out of your comfort zone a little bit. But then you roll into that stadium and it's like, hey, this is all we got and this is all we need, right? So um, – you know, I do, I do enjoy playing on the road, and and for whatever reason, um, we haven't been up to par on the road. But I, I know, uh, you know, coach does a great job of, job of self evaluating the team and, and making adjustments. So um, we'll be ready to rock this week. Zach, was it one of those things where, and I always the old school coaches say, well, we're just going to burn the film and all, you know, we're not going to watch that game and all that, but. You know, there, there's some things you you absolutely could pick up from that. Game. Oh, absolutely, yeah, especially know. where we're at in the season, right? Right. Like we we can't we can't be throwing away tape and and letting things slide by. Like this sure. is the time we got to be on top of it. We got to address any issues that we have and move forward because you know we got a big road one this week, and and you know who knows what's going to happen there in the playoffs. Like we could go on the we would have we may have to go on the road in the playoffs. So, um, you know, there's going to be big time games here. Uh, down the stretch that we're going to need to come together and play a complete game on the road. Now, some fans might have been ticked off because it was a penalty. I loved what you did going over there and just absolutely yeah, slamming absolutely. Taylor Rapp after, after yeah. that. What was going through your mind? Were you just seeing red in that moment, like get the hell away from my quarterback? Yeah, I, I don't know. Just I guess my angle of when I, when I saw it, it just looked like he kind of, if Dak hadn't have gotten down, he would have taken his he taken his head off. So, yeah. um, I don't know. I think he flopped a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> that's, that's part of an old lineman's um, yeah. you know, job, so... Yeah. Well, yep. Zach was okay. Let me ask you this because I remember in the Commanders game several years ago, we had you know, the, the thing happened with uh, you know, with uh, Andy Dalton. Andy yep. Dalton, and, yep. and 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 everybody gave the offensive line a bunch of s about that because oh they got it, they didn't defend Andy and all that. Does 
things like that kind of go through your mind. Like, I'm not going to let you guys talk about us not defending our quarterback anymore. Yeah, and I think it's just kind of back to that what you we were talking about just a second ago. Like, it's an attitude thing, right? Sure. Especially when you go on the road. And, I mean, obviously, wherever we're at. But, um, you know, when we're in an environment like that and everyone's juiced up and, and rolling, it's like you, you got to put your foot down at some point and stand up for your guys. And, um, you know, obviously, we'd like to be smarter and not to get the penalty. But, yeah, we're going to stand up for our guys. And, and Zach, I'm going to ask you, Mike does a really good job with – you guys – know about these officials right yeah. i mean it, it's something like I, I know mike's uh, you know got some attention to detail about this but you understand i mean he talks about th these officials and calls and stuff like that right yeah we do uh you know that was something new when when coach mccarthy came in that i wasn't um that we had never done before but yeah we do go through the crew and just see who uh you know who's calling the game kind of what they um what they like? Oh uh, yeah, kind of yeah. what what their yeah. calls are, what what, yeah. what 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 they've called heavy this year, and um, so I, I think it's health, helpful. And then you also put a, a name to the face, and right. you can have those conversations on the field, not just say hey ref, hey ref. You know, yeah. you, you know their names, and you can you can have a conversation with them. Okay, I got to ask you. I I, I I don't need advice, but maybe some of our listeners need advice for this. And, and putting together toys. I know we're all getting ready to put together <laughs> toys. A lot of folks. Uh, is Zach Martin a good toy putter together, or are there pieces left over that we have to worry about? Uh, I would say I'm average. Uh, I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna lie here. I'm not like the greatest, but uh, I'll put in the time. It's not about putting in the time. It's maybe you know maybe a couple of pieces uh, that at the end of the day you probably don't need anyway. So maybe we yeah. should, we would put those under the rug a little bit. But uh, now I'll be up. I'll be up putting together the toys this year. I kind of detect that that maybe Zach Martin might be a guy that might pay the extra 10, 20 bucks to maybe have somebody else put together the toys too. No, no, I, I haven't done that yet. Now I will say my my father in law and uh, you know is in town, so he he's pretty good with that stuff. So maybe I'll recruit him to do to help me with uh, with some Here of that. Go. Are you going to yeah. wrap packages at all? Is I am not. No, no. I, it's, no. It's, it's, is it something to do with geometry? I, mean, I don't yeah, know, but it, it's it, like when you when you come down the the stairs at our house, you know exactly what packages were wrapped by me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know exactly what packages were wrapped by my wife. Oh, Dad, Dad, yeah, thanks, Dad. <laughs> it was Santa. So, no, no, it wasn't me. Uh, come on now. <laughs> so, do you have any uh, Martin family Christmas traditions? Uh, we've done we've done the uh, you know prime rib. Uh, oh, we've geez, done the prime yes. rib Christmas uh, dinner the last yeah. few years. So we're gonna keep that going. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 always tough when you uh, when you're the the part of your family doesn't live in the in the same yeah. city so right. um you know luckily we got we got some family coming in to spend the, spend some time with us but um it's always a little difficult being away from family but i've got two young kids and they're starting right uh, my son is about to be five so he's getting like juiced up he's he's like entering the uh you know the stage is just being obsessed with christmas so it's getting fun yeah i bet you it is I mean, awesome. I mean, okay like do we have a team discussion what cookies and what are we leaving for santa What's Ooh. the Martin family leaving for Santa? Because yeah, that's important. You, I know you got to tell your tell your, your tell your guys there that hey, Santa really appreciates this. <laughs> yeah, sure, right, right, you, right. Know? you know, Santa kind of likes that. Maybe a glass of whiskey along with his cookies. Ooh, yeah. You never know. Oh, yeah, you yeah, never yeah, know. yeah, it's a long night for Santa. You know, he's got to you know, get him through. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I like. I think uh, my kids and uh, they did it in today. Actually, your standard kind of uh, yeah, you know, icing sugar cookie uh, Christmas deal. So there we go. Yeah, I'll throw those back. So tomorrow uh, I'm going to do my annual top ten Christmas movies okay. list. Okay. What is your do you and, and maybe if you don't want to narrow it down to one, you don't have to. But do you have favorite Christmas movies? Yeah, I mean, I was always a uh, I was always a Santa Claus guy growing up. Yeah. Um, we so we've hit that. I watched that with my son this year. We watched. Uh, he likes. He's into Elf. So I've seen Elf about twelve times this uh, holiday <laughs> season. Um, Jingle All the Way is, is a kind of a sleeper pick. You know, Tur Turbo that. Man. We watched that a couple weeks ago. Uh, and then the Home Alone, sir, I was a, a fan favorite there. Oh, this is good. We got this text in because you brought up the prime rib. We actually had yeah. a show conversation. Do you think prime rib is a steak? <laughs> oh, great question. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> cut up it is, but I would say, it, you know, it's also like a rib roast. So it's a it's roast. Like a roast. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah, like a roast. But if you cut them up, then it turns into the steaks. See, I, I knew you were going to come up with a great answer. Yeah. Everybody's like, I was sitting there thinking, oh, he's thinking this one through yeah, for sure. Yeah. But let me ask you this, though. God, we're asking a lot of like uh, Christmas and cooking questions. Well, it's the season. Oh, I know, but, but Zach knows. Yeah. Okay, Zach, do we go for the side, like the horseradish sauce 
Oh, the you know the horseradish. Oh, yeah. do, do you use a or do you use an aju? Do you use a? I'm, I'm I double down. I do aju with the horseradish. Holy jeez! Yep, yeah, that's a that's a must for. Can, uh, can you bottle some of that and like leave it outside the star somewhere that I can find it? From <laughs> yeah, you? yeah, we'll leave you a little. Uh, we'll yeah, you to go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll box it up for Santa you. Santa would really like some aju <laughs> with horseradish sauce in it. Let me tell you. Like, what kind of sides are we rocking with the prime rib? Because I know you're an the anti Thanksgiving food. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I mean, I like. Uh, I mean, the mashed potatoes is kind of. You know, I mean, you can do that with anything. Right. Um, man, I'm yeah, I'm a meat and potatoes guy, honestly. So if you give me a little side of mashed potatoes with my prime rib, yeah. I'm good to go. Well, it seems like Christian Wilkins might be a meat and potatoes guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty, he looks pretty like big it. guy yeah. to yeah. handle. Yeah. Uh, well, what stands out to you about having to go up against him? Hopefully, assuming you're on the field, which I'm, I'm hoping that you are. Yeah. No. He. You know. He's. He's. Um, you know, we played him his rookie year back in '19, and you can tell watching the film, he's gotten better and better. And, right. Um, I think his lateral quickness is really what sticks out when I watch him on tape. He does yep. a great job of hiding his move, line movements. I think their whole D line does. You know, that's kind of you know a tough thing for the offensive lineman is in the run game is definitely handling those movements. And I think they do as good as anyone I've seen this year of hiding that those movements uh, when you watch the film. But definitely his lateral quickness, uh, and then you know he's big, strong guy, so he can push the pocket. Right. And um, you know him and Siler in there, they they've got a. They run their their TT games. Yeah, you know the both nose tackle. Yep. They run those games as well as anyone I've seen this year too. So we're we're going to be on top of it this week. Man, Siler just kind of like you talk about a meat and potatoes. Guy. Oh yeah, I mean <laughs> he's like kamikaze yeah, there, exactly. Yeah. Like he's yeah. like he's the guy. Like he's the penetrator, and yes. and then and, and he's just getting knocked all over the place. And then like two other guys make the tackle, and he's just kind of. Walking back to the huddle, looking at his you know, his ear hole on his helmet because he's got knocked around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he, but he sacrificed himself to get somebody else home. Right. Well, yeah, he he's just like when I watch him, like he's just a hard nosed, tough kind of old school player, right? Yeah. Like a guy that you're gonna have to bring it every single snap, and he's not gonna stop. And um, like you said, he sets up those guys around him. Yeah. I mean, he makes plays himself. Also, he does. He, he sure he, does. Uh, but he really sets those guys up around him. Talking with Zach Martin here in the G-Bag Nation, your all-pro Cowboys guard. Yeah, it seems like the Dolphins, maybe they don't get enough credit for how good they are in the front there. I mean, they're they're among the league leaders when it comes to sacks. What other challenges do you notice that they can present for you guys? Yeah, I mean, they've got they've got guys all across the board. I mean, we talk about this every week, right? Theme of the NFL, everyone's right. got a good yeah. front. And, um, you know, unfortunately... You know they they did lose one of their best. I, I really think uh, Phillips Phillips yeah. uh, is a stud, and unfortunately he got hurt there. But um, you know they they do a great job in their games. Uh, obviously they brought Chubb in last year who can who can win consistently on the edge, and then like we just talked about those guys inside who are running those twists and and pushing the pocket. So um, you know it's gonna be another great matchup for us, and and we're looking forward to it. Zach, I mean, they, I mean, I'm, I'm an old guy, old scout guy, and I never like the metrics and stuff. I never paid attention, but now I have to pay attention to them because I'm doing radio. But man, this is like a four man pressure line. So all of a sudden, if you get a team that's predominantly four man pressure, does it worry you about some other things that they might do? Is it, or is that, or is that who they are? It's kind of who they are, and then they, you know they're a simulated pressure team too, right? So they're, yeah. they're blitzing a guy and dropping a guy out on the other right. side. So. Um, they can kind of screw with your protections from time to time, but um, you know I do think that's a that's a step we've taken this year, right. big time in my opinion, is um, just our blitz pickups and our our communication. Tony's there. done a great job of helping. Man. Yep, yep, he's yeah. done it. The backs done an awesome job, and the receivers are really locked into their hots. And and if you know if we do have the protection going the wrong way, the the back and the receivers are on top of it. So. Really, when you're playing a team like this and, and, and they do some of that simulated pressure, everyone's got to be on the same page in the passing game and making sure that the, the ball's getting out and, and, and to the right guy. So um, that's definitely a big step we've taken this year. We had a National Signing Day yesterday. Do you have a, a big National Signing Day memory from your time committing to Notre Dame? Um, I mean, I did your, your stand. I committed pretty early. I was committed like the summer before my senior year. So, um, not really. I mean, I remember being at, we did it like at our school, like in the library. We had, yeah. uh, we had a couple other people going to play college sports. We all got together and did our, our, uh, signed our national letter of intent together, which was pretty cool. So you got to go with the, the, the real tall lady volleyballer right next to you? Something yeah, yeah, like that. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How was being recruited though? I mean, you, I think for people that don't get to experience that, you'd think, oh my gosh, it's got to be amazing. But I've heard stories that it can actually kind of be a pain in the ass. Yeah, I mean it's definitely stressful down there at the end, especially when you have several schools that you, 
you know, like for, for myself, like it wasn't just Notre Dame and that was it. Um, I visited a, bu visited a bunch of schools and, and liked a few schools and, and could have seen myself going to any of those places. And um, so it, it is tough, you know, getting down the stretch there and then, you know, having to have those conversations with the coaches and, um, you know, tell them you're not, you're not coming. But um, it's an exciting time, obviously. I mean, we didn't have the early uh, – we didn't have the early uh, – signing period when I was coming yeah. out. So it was like February, I think. But if you, if Zach, let me ask you this, would you have ever, I know Notre Dame was just, you were locked in and mm. that was you, but would you have ever considered going in the transfer portal? Ooh. I, I mean, mean, you're like, I mean, as great as you were at Notre Dame, would you like one year said, I'm going to go play somewhere else for one year? No, I don't think so. I mean, I had it, like I, I came in, I was a little undersized when I came in. So kind of going into school i figured i would probably red shirt sure um so i did red shirt and then you know i started playing that next year but i mean it's crazy now i, I don't i don't crazy, i don't man. really like it to be I honest with you it's because it's just it just turns it it's free agency right yep. yeah. it is and there's no rules and um i feel bad for the coaches too i do too because the coaches are the ones that are putting all this time in recruiting right and then you know you say one thing to a kid in a meeting that first year yeah you know, you you just got to watch yourself. I think it kind of limits the coaches and how they want to, you know, develop guys. And and it's just it's just tough because then you're basically recruiting the kids that are already there to make sure they stay. They stay, yeah, yeah. Always awesome getting to catch up with you, man. Uh, hopefully, you know, Sunday get that big dub in Miami. And we'll catch yep. up with you again next week. All right, I appreciate it, fellas.